Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So today's video, I'm just working on a uh, scene here and it just gave me an idea to kind of uh, go through a couple things with you. Uh, pretty basic tips, but just a couple quick tips uh, using Manga Studio 5 here to uh, do a few of your comic illustrations. Uh, one of the things is this is still a little bit rough, but this is pretty much how I work up a, a scene. I start with a very basic thumbnail. The thumbnail will look like uh, just to show you kind of how I really start something like this. I'll draw very small and I'll get this concept down with a loose uh, kind of framing like this. You know, so I'll get all the information in there, but it'll be extremely rough where probably only myself and maybe a few other people would be able to figure out what that is. Uh, but that's how it starts essentially. And then I just keep refining it from there. Uh, another way or another quick thing I wanted to show you is that when you're to the point and you're ready to start throwing your frames in, kind of a quick way to do it, uh, besides using the panel borders and the frame options that Manga Studio gives you, uh, I like to just do them visually with, you know, just these little shapes here. So you can go to this icon here. Uh, if you go to uh, this rollout here, the subtool, you can see it's just a rectangle. You can change it from rounded edge, uh, different brush size. You can control with the bracket keys and you can see it get thinner and thicker here. So I'll just kind of do that really uh, fast like that. And then I'll just put it into rough uh, place. Hit Command Shift T. Uh, just keep in mind this is really just a free transform. But that's a sh shortcut command to get to it. And then I'll just distort these into place. So this is just how I do mine. And again, Manga Studio has way better options for controlling these. But I, I like doing it visually. I usually make this as its own layer and just kind of get that into place. You can rotate it, uh, pull each corner perspectively. Uh, there's all kinds of neat options just by doing that. And that's really not the main purpose of this video. I just wanted to show you that real quick. The thing that I wanted to show you is that how focus lines can be done so well inside of uh, Manga Studio. So, so if you notice, I've got these little rough lines in the background here. And you know, obviously I can blue line this and, and just work out those rough lines on a separate layer. I'll just call this focus lines like that and you know I could do these freehand there's no reason not to it's there's times where you want to do it freehand and there's times where you don't uh, you want to really mix up the focus lines in my opinion if not if you get in the habit of using the same kind of speed lines on everything uh, your panels will all look like they have the same mood same tempo and all that stuff you got to really mix it up and you don't want to use them all the time you also want to leave areas where you just have some background areas where it's just blank you know you really got to mix it up and you got to find your own style when it comes to that but the thing i want to show you today is if we go into the focus lines and let's see they're going to be under ruler special ruler uh focus line right here so you can just drop this wherever you want and it's kind of like a one point perspective uh, in a sense, but it's a little bit better than that because a one point perspective will uh, give you horizontal vertical lines as well as the, the single vanishing point. So this is just a single vanishing point. You ultimately cannot uh, draw off of it. So, and actually you have to draw on this layer. So this is, it's a little bit different in the way that the perspective guides work, but you can place that wherever you need to. And now every line you create will converge at that point. Like I said, the one point perspectives will work that way as well, but they will also accidentally snap to horizontal uh, vertical. So you have to disable those. Uh, now, if you want to move this and this isn't exactly where you wanted it, you come back to the selection tool here, grab it, just move it around. You'll notice that diamond, you can also toggle it on and off. That's what that's for. So let's just move that around, play with some different uh, positions of it. Let's move it to here. Uh, let's up our brush size with the bracket keys and then let's just draw in some uh, some thick to thin uh, focus lines motion lines whatever you want to call them but the really the beautiful thing about this is you can just create you don't have to worry so much about it so you can really just uh, in essence focus on just the lines and not the creation process of it so much uh, they're going to snap to that every time and, and, you know, as a traditional artist, if you come up traditionally or you work traditionally, you know that to do this, you have to sit there and move a ruler around the table 
uh, which isn't bad and you get pretty quick at it, but it takes a, a lot more time than what you're seeing here. So there's a lot of speed and ease of use when it comes to doing these and uh, I find it to just be very, very helpful. Now we can toggle on and off our visibility to the other layer. We can start erasing back those other lines because you can see that just based on the way I did it visually, it doesn't line up. So let's try to move it again and see if we can get something a little bit closer to what I sketched, even though I know that I pretty much sketched uh, out, of, um, out of proportion or out of uh, correct perspective. So I'll scale this brush up again. You can see it's, it's, it's not going to hit all those lines. In fact, yeah, none of them on this one, so I'd have to move that again. Uh, and I think that really the, the best perspective for this one, I want it to have the effect that your focal point is somewhere in here. I could make the argument that the focal point is right where his face is, but I don't want all the lines converging there. I want them to converge on a bit of an angle. So I'm going to say right about here where the uh, silhouette and the other character meets. Let's try that. And what I could do is just draw some of these into place real quick. And then go ahead and erase the layer just so it's not as uh, conflicting with what I'm doing here. Find out where I put my keyboard. There we go. And then I can go back through and add in the, um, the rest of the lines. So I can just kind of see the difference there. And again, that was just the first initial part. Is just my rough sketch. Just got to remember to jump back onto the ruler here. Uh, so the the rough sketch is always going to be a little bit different than what your actual lines come out to be. But really, the, the other neat thing about doing it this way, it affords you a lot of opportunities. You can really mess around with the thick to thin ratio of the lines. So putting good pressure and just you don't have to worry about being inside the frame. So if you get a better line work by drawing outside the frame and tapering inward, which I would imagine you would because whenever you try to force yourself to draw right to that very edge, it's going to change the way that you're constructing the line a little bit. So you can just go ignore this uh, border like this, you know, really play around with the, the way the lines break up, the different thick to thins. And again, all these variations that you add into the style are going to make you feel like you got a lot more options to create a variety of effects with your panels. And let's see. Let's go ahead and just take a selection around this. Like that. Hit delete. So you can see real quick you can add those, uh, those focus lines and do just a, a lot of different effects to your work. I need to actually erase back here as well because there's supposed to be kind of a hand reaching out there. So hopefully this is showing you a couple quick things. I just want to do more of these quick tip type videos where I get into some of the details of what Manga Studio can do for you. So let me know what other questions you might have with some of these things that you can create inside of this program. And I'll try to get that on my list. And keep in mind, I do have a new course on perspective drawing where I get into the details and we construct a cityscape in three-point perspective, kind of a modern futuristic cityscape. And there'll be links in the description box below. You can get that both on Udemy and my Gumroad, uh, whichever platform you prefer. So hopefully this has been helpful for you. If it has, be sure to let me know in the comments section below and what you'd like to see in the future, and I'll get that going. So thanks very much. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.